Hello, everyone. After our two-part interview series with Rob Reed, we've reached episode number 11 on the Concord University Athletic Alumni at Work series. My name is Wes McKinney, and joining me today and joining us is two-time Concord Football All-American and a guy that goes by the same letter twice, J.J. Jeremiah Johnson. How are you, man? Doing great, man. I can't complain. Yeah, looking. About f- you, I'm, I'm doing good. Doing good. Just uh, obviously filling content on the website right now. Started this interview series and I've had a lot of good guests. And I think you're going to be right up there with some of the great ones we've had so far. And um, yeah, man, such a great career for you. Here at Concord, 2013 to 2017, four-time All-Region selection, including second-team selections in 2015, 16, and 17. One of the few athletes in the entire history of Concord, regardless of sport or program, to be All-Conference uh, four years in a row, and all of that in addition to being a Don Hansen Honorable Mention All-American in 2017. The same honor in 2015. So, JJ, if you could just kind of give us an update on what's going on in your life. I know that you were with the Houston Roughnecks of the XFL there until it folded up back in the spring right after the pandemic started. So if you can just kind of give us an update on what's going on with you. Yeah, man. It's been a crazy year, 2020, man. <laughs> a lot of people lost jobs and a lot of things got shut down. Um, you know... The Rock brought, brought the league out, so it's going to come back out in 2022. Um, I'm pretty sure they did that because, you know, there's still cases going on and things like that. They didn't want to run into more conflict with it. With it. So, uh, you know, with my time right now, I'm just, you know, back home, seeing family, my nephew here, uh, you know, get some good food, Thanksgiving and things like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, just enjoying the time, man, staying on the grind and, Staying active, that's the most part, uh, most important part, staying active, staying ready for, you never know, a call might come in. Um, just doing my job, man, just just stand, on, stand up. Yeah, you talk about being back home, and for you, that's Baltimore, Maryland, and as I mentioned, we're going to talk about a lot of different things here today. We're going to talk about some of the great, memorable, game-changing plays you made over your career that spans there the middle part of the 2010 decade obviously that that unbelievable 2014 concord team that you were a part of 13 and one national semifinalist conference champions regional champions and then uh, towards the end we're going to dig into your pro career as i mentioned the roughnecks of the xfl you spent time in the aaf with salt lake city you was in colts mini camp um after the 2018 draft so a lot to dig into here but JJ, let's start back at the beginning. 2013, you're being recruited out of Perry Hall High School in Baltimore. What in the heck did you know about Concord prior to being recruited by head coach Garen Justice and his staff at the time? Um, I didn't know much, man. Uh, Honestly, it was... When it got down to, you know, final decisions, I had only had two offers, and it was Concord University and Delaware State. I wasn't going to go to Delaware State, but my SAT scores weren't all up to date. I wasn't all that good. Um, and I actually came up to a visit. It was snowing when I came up there. Me and my mother, I think my brother came. Yeah, we I, I can't I think it was Pipeston we were staying at. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we was there and um, you know it was a good good vibe from the coaches. You know they wanted me to come. Um, Coach Ward, he actually he actually was the one that came. Dustin Ward, he actually was the one that came to Baltimore and uh, sat down with me and my mother in our living room, our dining room, and um, that that that. Right there, just uh, made my mother smile, you know, uh, especially me being the first to go to a four-year college out of state. Um, you know, her seeing, her, her seeing that, you know, I put my words into action with me saying that I'm going to go to college and things like that, you know, just uh, making her proud, really. Um, 
So, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I came out there. I didn't really know anybody out West Virginia, Concord. Um, I knew Derek Williams. He was from here, mm-hmm. but I met him out there. Uh, but I met some cool guys. You know, I liked the vibe. Pete, Pete Gondor, that's my, you know, my close friend. When we, we, I met him when I came on a visit, and we, we clicked ever since then. And uh, you know, it just we, I, I made the best of what it was, man. You know, I'm from a city. I'm from the city, so you know, coming to you know the, the in the mountains, and it's 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 very, it's much different, very different. So uh, yeah, I made we made it. We made it. Made the best of it. How how big of a jump was was it for you, Jeremiah? The fact that you know you're from the city, you're 18 years old, and you're about to go five hours from home in the mountains of, of West Virginia. How, how big of a jump was that for you, just from a lifestyle standpoint? It was a leap of faith, man. <laughs> uh, I really. I really didn't want to, you know, I always wanted to get out and explore more than what's in Baltimore. You know, I don't really, like, a lot of my trips that I've been taking have been business trips. I haven't really been on a lot of vacations. Only vacation trip I really can say I took was to Alaska. Um, That was pretty cool. It wasn't snowing at the time. But, uh, yeah, a lot of my trips have been business trips, man. And um, I've been trying to expand my mind outside of Baltimore and, and don't by doing that give back to the youth while like letting them know to try to step out of their comfort zone comfort zone and you know go to college or experience it being on you know campus and things like that living in the dorm rooms and i actually got my two cousins to come out to concord for a little short period of time and you know they was able to interact and meet with meet people and you know uh but for me, it was, you know, it was just a leap of, leap of faith and trusting the process, you know, with, you know, going to a small school and knowing I, you know, I can play on a top level and things like that, you know, just mm-hmm. uh, going harder, you know, being an underdog. I'm used to being an underdog. I always wasn't, I wasn't always like a, a athlete, really. Um, I played center and rec, rec football, you know, uh, I believe, I, I always tell people, uh, I feel like I have. I don't know what a trophy yet, but I got MVP as a center. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I just I just always stayed, you know, dedicated and, and committed to what I love and I had a passion for. And being being on the field was like my sanctuary, man. I I just enjoy it. I don't even when I was out with the XFL Roughnecks, I don't even I didn't consider it as like a job. I just was out there. I love love the game, man. And yeah, that's 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 what separated me from a lot of a lot of people. You know, the, my my mindset, my uh, my discipline, um, you know, just 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 being able to be a fast paced learner and, and and being able to be a yeah, just being able to learn fast, man, and and, and coachable, yeah, things like that. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about your, your the beginnings of your career here at Concord before you became that All-American cornerback for the Mountain Lions. You uh, you were recruited as a wide receiver, right, Jeremiah? That's that's right. So, when did it become apparent that you were going to be moving to to, to cornerback, and, and what was that transition like for you? Uh, I already had it made up my mind. I had it made up my mind. Uh, I just was, you know. I'm I'm actually glad I was able to experience how like a wide receiver, you know, their their movements off the line and things like that with Coach uh, Pennington. He was a great coach, great strength and conditioning coach. Also, uh, yeah, he, he he taught us you know some great things that I I took into being becoming a cornerback. While also I was going against uh, Riyad Richardson. You know, he was a a top baller at cornerback. For Concord, and um, just going against him um, on scout scout offense. When I was at scout offense, I always uh, you know give my all to you know give him a good look for his upcoming upcoming opponent opponent. Mm-hmm. And um, 
Yeah, I was I was taking reps. For, I was taking mental reps from his game, uh, while also doing my own research on other people that I I looked up to in the league. I mean, I I thought it was you know top top guys in the league. Um, yeah, I just already knew it. I had it in my mind that I was going to switch to cornerback. Yes, yeah, so you go through the 2013 season, as you mentioned, on the scout team. You're on the offensive side going up against guys like Riyad, guys like Mike Carey. So you're into the spring season of 2014 now. And what was it like getting those reps, learning from those guys on the defensive side of the ball? When I, when I switched to defense? Yeah, yep. Um getting those rest with those guys, man, is, is, you know, it was a blessing, uh, when I jump, you know, it was a blessing. And, you know, I, I just, I just loved the, that, that year I switched over. I just loved the leadership, um, and how tight we was. Uh, I just, I just learned a lot, man, you know, just playing fundamental football more, man. And, I can't really explain. Uh, it's, it's it's a lot I learned from them, though. I definitely did. You know, being being much more wiser, even off the field, because um, we had some guys. Austin Dawson, he was he was a dog, man. <laughs> it, it, every 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 person on that defense, it just brought a different part of a beast out of you. You know, uh, <clears throat> I just forgot his name for a minute, man. Um, Marshawn. Cummings. Cummings, yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't talked to him in a while, but he was a dog too, man. And, you know, all all around the board, offense and defense, you know. And Shep, my dog Shep, he was coming up, you know. We we was just we were just have out there having fun, man. You know, it's always fun when you win it. So yeah, right. Was, yeah. Yeah. This this is this is going to be fun because I, I want to dive into some of the personalities. On that 2014 team coming up here, and I forgot guys like Austin Dotson were even in yeah. the mix there. So yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a melting pot of personalities. But um, let's talk about that 2014 season. Some of the moments from that 2014 season. Concord goes 13 and one as I mentioned at the top, but you guys have several close calls that year. 37-34 win against Bowie State. Concord defense gets a stop. Um, around the like the 20, 25 yard line late in the game to seal that win. You have a uh, interception late and a home win over Charleston, 24-20. You guys win the Mountain East Conference Championship, 29-20 at Shepherd, and then a few weeks later, you guys win the regional championship over Bloomsburg, 32-26. One thing in common in all those games you make game changing plays you have the interception against Charleston you have the block kick run back for a touchdown against Shepard in that contest you made a big uh, a few big plays in the Bowie State win but Jeremiah before we talk about anything else I, I wanted to focus in on something the two block kicks you score a touchdown against Bowie State and Shepard on block kicks how how much i guess practice or film went into blocking all those kicks that year because in 2014 Concord blocks nine kicks in 14 games as a team. Coach Dawson, man. <laughs> Coach Dawson, he's 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 you know what he's talking about. RP to him and miss him, man. Uh, Pat Dawson. Uh yeah, we'll do that at the every practice, you know. I think even between practices, you know, uh we have we have send guys off the side and he'll tell me just fade out and wait for the block. You no know, mm-hmm. trust it. And I always been right there. You know the ball to bounce right in my hands and I just take off running, man. And you know it it, it bounced to me and it also bounced to Mike Curry before uh, I can't remember. I think that was West Westchester. Westchester, yeah, I believe you're right. Yep. I think that was the game. But yeah, uh, we always practice it and you know we just waiting for the the ball to get blocked. We knew somebody was going to block it because we always had them, them guys up front to go get it. You guys, as I mentioned, make, I mean, you guys went 13-1. and A lot of those games were over by the third quarter, but, man, you guys had so many close calls, and I think sometimes that Charleston game from 2014 gets lost because of just how 
you know, I mean, how good Charleston had become in the conference. They were a team that was kind of like you guys trying to break through, make a name for yourself in that game. Concord's up 17-6 to at one point. Then Charleston scores two straight touchdowns. You guys get down by three, 2017. Uh, Novak throws a late touchdown in that game. You guys go up four points. But then with about um, um, about two minutes left to go, a minute and a half, two minutes left to go, Charleston's driving at about the 40-yard line, and you make an interception um, to, to basically seal the game. So first, let's talk about that game from just a physical standpoint because, as I mentioned, Charleston was just one of those teams that you knew it was going to be a hard physical game for all 60 minutes. Yeah, uh... Every week, uh, I mean, me personally, I never take my opponents for weaknesses. Uh, weakness, you know, I, I always try to, you know, scout their, you know, their best game out. And um, I believe, I'm not sure if that was the year their quarterback went down and they switched quarterbacks. It, it, it may have been. I actually forgot about that. It, it, it may have been that year. Yeah, uh, I know that happened in Bowie also. They they brought another quarterback in. Mm-hmm. And, you know that that happens though. You never plan for the backup quarterback to come in and you know do some you know spectacular crazy things like that. Um, but yeah, just locking in and 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 at the end at the end you gotta lock in, man. And uh, I always I always feel as though you know big time players make big time plays and big time moments and. Uh, in the fourth quarter is that's that's a special place. That's a special time to make a, a big play, and um, and I'm just I don't even know what coverage we was in, man. I just I just was over there to make a play. I think it was like cover two. I think it was cover two, but yeah, uh, I might have went off topic, but yeah, man, um, big time plays and big time moments, man. No, you actually kind of led me right into what I was going to ask. I was going to, you know, kind of take us inside that play. I, I think I remember, uh, and you can probably clear this up for me, but I, I think the Charleston receiver maybe ran like a square out or a hitch or something like that, right? Yeah, a comeback, yeah. he Well, he came back for the ball. Like, the quarterback was scrambling. He scrambled out to the left because we had pressure on him. And, yeah, he, he was coming back for the ball, but I just I just was right there to, you know, jump in front of it. But yeah, it was. Yeah, talk to me, JJ, about uh, before we go any further. Talk to me about that that defense that year, because you mentioned all the personalities on that defense. But man, you guys brought something different to the table from just a football standpoint. I mean, Austin Dotson was going to be a hard hitter. You and Mike Carey on the outside. You had Big Daryl in the middle there of that line. So. How did the, I guess the the pieces to the puzzle, come together there for that defense that you guys were just able to mesh, so nice during that 2014 season. Uh, just you know, it started in practice really. Um, you know, we had our had our times. You know, we we got into it on the field, but that all made us you know much more tighter. Uh, just having those right pieces, like you say, the right pieces to the puzzle. Having a front line that that can that can um, close gaps in, in the holes and you know get to the quarterback. Having people that can come off the bench and you know come off the sideline and and, and replace like replace guys that's tired or down. Mm-hmm. You know having those second string people. Uh, we just was we just was we was stacked, man. Even that linebacker. Um, on offense, we had you know great great weapons. T.J. Smith, um, Douse, we had Novak. You know we was we we just had leaders. We had leaders on both sides of the ball that year, and um, it was it was something special, man. I'm glad we I'm glad I was a part of that that uh, that history and that that year because we definitely did something great. Yeah, let's 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 dive into this MEC championship game at, at Shepherd and, and talking to the coaching staff throughout that season. I don't know if they were ever as laser focused for a game than they were for that Shepherd game because they knew 
exactly what kind of battle that was going to be going into that road game at Shepherd there middle of November actually about this time of year um, so what was the what was the mindset of the team as you guys are getting ready for the Shepherd game and then obviously the day of just with all the past history that Concord had had with Shepherd over about the last handful of years before 2014. Before that year, we played them. You know, we played them for the championship at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we didn't. We didn't like how they came up, and you know, we just. You know, it always been a rivalry with between us. You know, between us two, and uh, yeah, we just had a bad taste in our mouth. So we just went down there. We knew we knew it was going to be a packed crowd. I love and I love big stages. You know, big crowds and things like that. So, uh, you know, we just we just throttled down and made we just made sure we was in our scouting reports heavy that 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 week. You know, uh, tightening it down on Billy Brown, uh, the running back they had. Running back they had. He was a real real tough runner. So, uh, yeah, we just just tightened it down on everything that was thrown to us that game man actually like really like sitting here talking is like it's like me i'm i'm it's coming back to like everything is i don't know man you just bring it back in my head what, what like what happened like cause sometimes i sit here and think about sometimes i sit here and think about like uh no missing Kyle. It's me and the guys. We we be in a group chat. Um, you know we talk here and there too on Facetime. Uh, we still stay in contact. So uh, yeah, it just it just bring me back to thoughts and good memories of the season, the seasons that we had there, the times that the brotherhood that we had and everything like that, man. And you know I like sometimes you don't just sit. Sometimes people you know don't really sit back and think about the good memories. But yeah, I, I, I definitely, uh, definitely do that, man. I definitely miss it. Right, yeah, and I, I tell you what, that atmosphere at Shepherd, I'm glad you brought it up because, man, a picture perfect day for football it was, it was like in the 40s, just a perfect fall day. Um, the atmosphere, you talk about 5,000 people in, in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, for that game or close to it. I mean, place was absolutely jam full that day. What was what was the final message fr- from the coaches? You guys go back into the locker room one more time before the game. What was the what was the message from the coaches right before you guys take the field that day? Honestly, I can't remember, man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember, but uh, you know, one thing that stuck out to me a quote that uh was justice told us uh see a little see a lot see a lot see nothing and um you know i took that into life um with football everything like that you know with football you know you you see the foot you see you see the end zone before you catch the ball you might end up dropping it mm-hmm Oh, so see a little, see the football first and then the end zone. So uh, I just took it into life also with things like that. Because, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I just, that's that's one of the quotes. That I don't, I, I, I can't remember exactly what he told us in that moment. But uh, that quote right there, you know, stuck out to me. About that Shepherd game was your guy, Billy Brown. You guys went at each other for two or three years there. He's He's a little bit older than you, right? I believe so. Yeah, so, but, man, you guys had some, you guys had some great battles, you and and Billy Brown. Did you guys kind of bring out the best in each other, each year? I mean, obviously, you're a pro. He was a pro with the Eagles for a while. So, what was that matchup like, uh, personally, with him each year you guys went head-to-head? Um, no. Me, I like... I like to just shut, I I like to shut people down, man. Um... Uh, it was it was a great matchup though, like throughout the years, and um, yeah, we we 
I feel like I think I feel like I won the battle, though. I would say that. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we definitely brought we definitely brought out the best of each other. Um, I mean, every every game I come with my best, but uh, you know, like you say, is the crowd, the intensity, the you know, the the momentum, and everything. Um, with everything that's going on in the game, you know, the I. I just prepared myself for the Shepherd game all the time because I knew that I was going to be going up against him. Even in other games, I'd be going up against the best wide receiver that the team had. But, um, yeah, man, I feel like I got the best of them, though. Sure thing. And now I want to touch on – just take me through that play there. Concord's up 23-20. Shepard's on to kick a, a field goal to try to send it to double overtime. But you guys come through with a with a block field goal. You run it back. What happened there inside that play? Man, uh, from picking the ball up to running to the end zone, and I got on my knees, I said a prayer. All I all I felt was just everybody's come tagging me. I didn't even know people was running on the field before the thing, before I got in the end zone. <laughs> like, it was just like, when I when I looked at the video, when we finally looked at the film, I'm like, everybody on the field. Like, just, I think my Sean threw his helmet. They, it, was, it was crazy, man. It was a great experience, man. It was, yeah, man. I shed a tear. And uh, before that year, my my cousin passed away, so uh, I, de- I definitely dedicated that season to him. And um, yeah, man, it was it was a, it was a crazy year. For crazy. sure. For- I want to talk about the secondary specifically for for that Concord team. You, Mike Carey at the other corner, Derek Johnson, Mashawn Cummings, the two safeties on that team. Three of the four were new. Well, at least new to starting for Concord because only Mike had started games for Concord. So how was you guys able to kind of kind of figure out the chemistry and, and basically just feed off each other? Because, I mean, you had four interceptions. Uh, Derek had seven interceptions, including the uh, the game clincher against, against Bloomsburg in the regional championship. So how did everything kind of click for you guys right from the start that year? In practice, we had a great coach, Coach G. Um, he just, he just, uh, we just clicked tight, man. And um, even off the field, you know, we, you know, we ran into each other. You know, we ain't, we ain't, you know, hang out every day, but you know, uh, we definitely just clicked tight in practice. And. We wanted we wanted the best we wanted to bring the best out of each each and every one of us you know because you know some of the guys were seniors and uh, upperclassmen and stuff like that so I was like I say I just was you know being a being a learner you know soaking in the game from them and we just wanted to bring out the best of each out of, out of each and every one of us which 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 would, would happen. All right, let's talk about some of these guys that you alluded to already, JJ. The guys in that locker room, Austin Dotson, Novak. Um, I mean, you talk about Derek Johnson was from California, so was Nick Ortiz. Both of those were JUCO guys. Mashawn Cummings was a Division One transfer. You had, you know, guys like yourself that was a redshirt freshman and never uh, played college football before. Um, TJ obviously was. It was his first year here at Concord. Dallas was a Division One guy from the state of Florida. So how did you guys make everything work? And then. I'm not sure if you got any stories, but any any great things that went on that locker room that you still carry with you to this day? I mean, even guys like, I mean, Shep was there too. I mean, obviously, I'm sure he was kind of the jokester of the whole of the whole operation. But what was that locker room like that year? It was definitely just the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the locker room. It was. It was definitely. Uh... It was good, man. Um, I don't, I don't think Shep was. 
he was he was he wasn't as he hadn't come out of the show yeah. yet. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still he was still puppy chef. He was still puppy <laughs> chef. But he was still himself though. But uh, as the whole locker room, man, we just it was it was good vibes, man. I don't really yeah, it was it was it was all good in the locker room, man. And we uh. We just had we we were just focused, man. We just uh, we was laser focused. We 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 turned up. We had fun though. We did have fun. Mm -hmm. you no, know, uh, you know that's why I said and just in the locker room. Like, we did we did you know make make it the best of what we had you know going on out there. Uh, but yeah, we were just focused, man. And we had coaches that you know you know stayed on us. And you can ask anyone, man. Those those workouts in the gym. In the weight room, they was real, you know. I I still, to this day, I don't, I still don't like it. But, uh, but yeah, it made us better. And, um, you know, like I say, we were just pushing each other. We were just pushing each other to be great, man. Which I loved, which I loved out of that group. You know, uh, like I say, we had some leaders. We had guys that, you know, been there and, you know, know what it takes to win it all and, Things like that. We had a great, we had, a, we had a great group of guys. Was there ever a point in that season, JJ, the 2014 season, where the players could sense that something special was going on with that year? Yeah. Uh, did we go to West Lib that year? No, West Lib came to us. Mm -hmm. Um. We did, we did feel something special, man. Um, just, I soaked it all in, like the, it'd be the day before game day, and um, JB, I believe his name was, he would come out with the cards and the quotes on the cards, and uh, we'd be just sitting on the field, and um, he'd be talking, we'd pray and things like that, and um, I'm, I, I I might, you know, I, I think I peek, peek my eye up one time and, you know, see if everybody had their heads bowed and everything. And uh, just uh, just how dialed in everyone was, man, uh, I just I just felt that, you know, we, we was all on the same mission, you know, and we had that one mission to, you know, win it all and be Shepherd, be Shepherd, because we didn't like that feeling of them coming. The guys that was there before me when I was red shirt and didn't like that feeling how they came in and did what they done. So uh yeah, we just had a we was on a mission, man, and yeah, got that done. Sure thing. You finished the two thousand fourteen season. Last thing here, we'll just wrap it up here with that two thousand fourteen season, thirteen and one, national semifinalist, conference champion, regional champion for the Mount Lions that year but you personally you i didn't realize this you finished third on the team with 64 tackles four interceptions 17 pass breakups um and 21 total passes defended which are the most in a single season here at, at concord and now jj we we move on to the 2015 season how did how did you find ways to still make plays there during that 2015 season because i think early in the 2014 season people were you know scared of Mike Carey and throwing his way and then they realized now oh, wait a minute that guy over there on that other side wearing a number two on his chest he he's just as dangerous as, as Mike Carey so in 15 it's now you and Shep as cornerbacks as as he moves up from the nickel position so how did you guys still find ways to make plays because you knew the opportunities were going to be limited yeah um like you say, man, they 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 hardly tested me after the freshman year, Richard freshman year, and uh, that brought a lot of, you know, plays for Shep to make, which we talked about and everything like that in the locker room. Uh, and with me, I just you know did a better job with uh, dialing that, like focusing down and and film and trying to disguise my uh, my coverages more so I can make those plays and. Uh, you know, show that I can do do more without throwing me throwing, throwing me the throwing the ball to my side. Uh, 
yeah, man, just 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 disguising my plays more to make some more plays. You look at that 2016 season, and now all of a sudden you're one of the veterans of that group. You know, you're now like an Austin Dotson or a Mike Carey. You know, you're talking, you know, you have about 25 starts under your belt going into the 2016 season. Coach Price is now new to Concord, at least as a head coach. He'd been the defensive coordinator for you guys for several years before that. So what did you do from a personal standpoint to be more of a leader there in 2016? I've always been always been a lead by example type of person. Uh, I I tried my best to step up as the you know the vocal leader. Um, and that was 20 that was 2016. Mhm. So, uh yeah. And we also had, you know, I still had other guys. You know, Shep was the, you know, the real vocal one. So, um, you know, I just, I just did my part, man. Um, not to get out of, you know, you know, try to get myself out of. I try to, you know, you know, be more vocal leader. But I, I, if it's not me, you know, I'm, I'm gonna just do my thing and lead by example. Um, yeah, man, I just led by example, really. You look here, and if you weren't a if you weren't a game wrecker before 2017, then you certainly turn into that your senior year. You have a scoop and score against West Virginia Wesleyan to open up the 2017 season, and then you pick off two passes against UVA Wise. One of those went for a touchdown. The game's only score, matter of fact, against UVA Wise, seven nothing win for for Concord. One of the Truly unbelievable games that I can remember in recent memory. Uh, you talk about seven nothing with a defensive touchdown. What was what was that UVA wise game like? Because you guys knew that if you gave up any points in that game, that might be it. I mean, even if it was a field goal to UVA wise. So what did the defense do during that game in 2017 to completely shut them down? Me, please. Um... Yeah, man, make plays, and it was Thursday night football, man. You know, I, I think, I think that's the best, that's the best time, man, to, to, to show out and do your thing. Well, any time, but you know, under the lights is a great time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, defense, we just you know stepped up, made made the plays that we needed to make. We had, uh, I think, we had some young guys out there on defense also. You know, Keyshawn Hall, um, Jonathan Roebuck. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they all stepped up and did their part. We had some other guys also. But, yeah, they all stepped up and did their part, man. And, you know, uh, those plays I made and um, the sacks that they had, it, it all came from practice. You know, uh dialing down and I knew they are, we already knew that they had a big big target that they wanted to try you know go deep with and um I was rejecting all rejecting all that man I was I wasn't letting none of that happen on me yeah you you mentioned the sacks there Justin Noble and um uh, Malik uh, a Trollinger his name almost escaped me there for a second those those two guys plus Colt Neal uh, combined for like ten sacks or something that night or you know I think they maybe had three apiece and then someone else threw one in there late I can't remember exactly how the breakdown went but um, how much easier did that make it on the secondary in that UVA wise game to know that you guys you know didn't have to cover yeah that that it, long it makes for a DB man having a great D line that can get pressure on a quarterback and you know, contain him from, you know, scrambling and, you know, getting outside that pocket uh, is, is amazing because, you know, like you just said, it, it takes off it takes off a lot of pressure on, like, um, obviously, if, if a pressure in the quarterback's face is going to come out fast, so uh, not many deep balls was thrown. Um, I'm not sure how many they completed deep that game, but... Uh, yeah, we was in his face, man, and 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 that having them up front handling handling they one eleven is amazing to us, man. Yeah, take me inside that interception, JJ. The pick six uh, 
in the fourth quarter. It's at 0-0 all the way into the fourth quarter, deep into the fourth quarter, matter of fact. And, and you come up with that pick six for the game's only touchdown. What was that like? It was, it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. And um, if, if the stands... If the, <laughs> If the stands was lower, I would have jumped in the stands with the crowd, man. <laughs> the, crowd, the crowd, I just love the energy. Like, the energy brings out a lot in in the game. You know, um, I just, it was it was a great, it was a great, great time. And, you know, for, for me to be able to make that play, to me to make that play, uh, I loved it, man. I loved everything about it. Yeah, no doubt. On the on the same sideline, you get one of your first career interceptions. Not your first, but one of the first ones you had against Charleston. I think that was kind of the game back in 2014 that Jeremiah Johnson made a name for himself. You make that interception there against UVA. Wise run all the way back across the field. I mean, I think it was only about a 25, 26 yard interception, but you probably ran about 70 yards trying to get into the end zone on oh, that well, play as you came back across the field. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I know what you're talking about. The, <laughs> I think I know when I when I came to our sideline. Yeah, yeah. They threw it deep, and I was the only person right there. You talking about that play? I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got it. I had to. I had to. After that play, I seen that I needed to work more on my um, returning skills. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because they wasn't really throwing me the ball, so you know. Uh, yeah, I had to I had to work on my returning skills. You know? Yeah, and that was just like I said, just uh, just some of the handful of plays that you made throughout your career. I talk about the Charleston game, the Shepherd game. Uh, I mean, I just go on and on. But your career numbers here at Concord: 191 tackles, four forced fumbles, and recovered. You force four and also recover four. 11 interceptions, which is tied for fifth in program history. 36 career pass breakups which is tied for third and concord football lore and now jj i want to talk about your professional career because we really haven't had a chance to really catch up with you since you made an appearance with the colts in mini camp in the spring of 2018 the time with the salt lake stallions of the now former american alliance of football and then uh actually i guess it was last year about this time you were drafted by the Roughnecks of Houston of the XFL. So this kind of let's go in in order here. Talk to me first about the experience with the Colts in their mini camp back. Uh, I guess about two and a half years ago now. Yeah, uh, I went up, I went along. Uh, I was watching the draft. My pops, a few other people, close friend. Uh, yeah, man, I was, you know, I was hoping to get my name called. Um, I didn't. Ten minutes after the draft, I received a call. Um, wanted to bring me in. And, uh, you know, it was a tryout base. And I went in. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, meeting guys. I met, I met um, Andrew Luck. Shook his hand and everything. Pretty cool guy. Yeah, what's he like? I mean, I mean, I know he's a Stanford graduate and everything. What's he like before we go any further? What's he like? He's uh, he. he <laughs> I never really uh, cause he was he was there, cause he was injured. He was injured. Oh, okay, so, sure, uh, sure. Yeah. So um, I just I just I was walking past and like we, you know, we we shook hands and everything. But uh, he, you know how you smile. You got them gums, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he's 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 a cool guy, cool guy. I haven't really got to really rap with him and talk with him. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, the experience there was cool. You know, it was good. Um, definitely was able to take something out of that experience. You know, the you know which led me on to the AEF and to the XFL. So every level I, you know, every team I've been on, I was able to get get the feel of the pro and everything like that because I was I was really 
experience and all that on a first hand basis. I haven't really had anyone that I knew that was in those in those buildings, in those meetings and everything like that. So I experienced it all off the first like the first time myself. Yeah, and some other personalities that you run across in, in your in your pro days to this point. Uh, Dennis Erickson, he's been coaching football since before you and I were both both alive. Obviously, he made his mark in college at several different programs. What was playing for him like in the AAF there for the short time that it was in existence? It was great, man. Um, I want to say he was more – he was more of a laid back type coach, you know, he was older. Uh but he, he had he had things, you know, in, in order, you know, it wasn't out of order, anything like that. Um It was it was it was a great time and I was glad that they, you know, brought me back. Uh I, I definitely was doing my thing out there. Um like I say, man, it's, it's it's just crazy how it's it's you get you get so close to getting like you get your foot in the door, and I get so close to about to take off with something, and something always happened. Like 2020, the coronavirus. I was I was about to. I was about to go up another notch in, in the XFL, the Roughnecks, man. Um, they 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 fully believed in me, and and um, you know, we're gonna get into that team. But with the AAF, you know, uh, Randy Mueller, Randy Mueller, he was the uh, he was the GM for them, and mm-hmm. uh, he definitely trusted in me, and I give him a lot of praise, man. Yeah, and let's go. Sh- right into the xfl there your time with houston you get drafted by the roughnecks it's another coach that made his name in college june jones obviously with the run and shoot offense at hawaii and a handful of other places in his in his time um but but you start from day one there for houston jj what was what was your time like you had your first career interception was almost a pick six and uh last week as i was preparing for this interview uh, I heard you give a press conference. You was playing the uh, St. Louis, is it the Battle Hawks, right? Is that their yeah. name? And you said you got hawked down uh, on that on that pick six there, or, or on the near pick six. Uh, you got tackled like the five yard line or something by one of the uh, St. Louis players. But but how, how was the XFL coming together for you? It was great, man. It was great. I knew, like coming from the AEF, that the XFL. It also being a first season being brought back out that it was going to be like a, you know, the schedule can switch. Um, you know, we 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 gonna have some some days like we like kind of like lab rats you can say, but not really. <laughs> but um, yeah, because we on the first you know first first season and everything sure. like that. Uh, it was it was great, man. Um, from from the coaching staff, from the stories, uh, from the meetings, the you know the quote quote of the day every day we had, to to June Jones story, all that man. June Jones is a is a brilliant guy, man. We was in practice, and we we didn't we we barely use chains like every <laughs> like it can go a deep route every time like. We, <laughs> We just out there playing, man. We we most in shape, uh, but yeah, he's a smart guy, man. And our defense, we was we was we was great. Like I say, we, we you got a defensive line that can get to the quarterback that make it takes so much pressure off the, the DBs and everything like that. And we had some hitters at linebacker, uh, but yeah, man. I think I've been a part of some great coaching staffs that you know had the team in line, and um. I think the XFL, you know, that that that's at the top of the board with, you know, with what I see as a pro football team, how we handle things. Talk to me here, because I think some people is going to find this interesting. From from, you guys played on a Sundays, right, and some Saturdays in the XFL, right? Mm-hmm. So so, what's a typical 
week like from say Monday until the time you guys strap it back up on on Sunday? What's a typical week like? Monday, uh, say we play Sunday, he may give uh, he he'll give us off Monday. We'll have film. We'll just watch. We'll watch film. No, we'll have. I, I, I can't. I can't fully remember. But we'll have off the next day, and we'll have film in the morning. We we'll have you know breakfast, breakfast and and um and lunch. Uh, but to, Tuesday, you know Mondays we just if we did go out if we did go on the field we'd just be in helmets, mm-hmm. uh, helmets and spiders. Uh, we won't turn it up until you know putting the shoulder pads on prior to Wednesday. I think I'm not sure I can't remember, but I, I think it was a week we we went you know. Just straight shells, cause they they wanted to protect our bodies, man. And I I thought that was smart. You know, we had we had weeks where uh, we had a yoga instructor come in, did yoga. Um, yeah, we just took great care of our bodies. And our strength and conditioning coach, he was very smart. Um, yeah, man, we just we just we took we took we took care of each other. And they that's what that's that's the thing, Coach June Jones said. You know, uh, you know. You, I can't remember the, the exact words, but he said, you take care of us, we take care of you, which, you know, us us being smart and doing the right things, they're going to take care of us, you know, give us off days that we need it and, you know, be light on us, not too heavy, things like that. But, sure. yeah, it was it was definitely it was definitely a smart game plan to do out the week. Sure. Last thing here for you, JJ, we've gone over – 50 minutes and I, I thoroughly enjoyed this and I hope that our listeners will enjoy this as well but last thing how much now that you you know you're not playing right now you're just strictly training looking for your next opportunity whether that's the XFL whether that's so, something else how much do you reflect on your journey Baltimore Maryland where you were a re- receiver out of high school or at least recruited as a receiver cornerback started all four years at a division two school um, all American, four time all conference performer on the first team. And now you're on your, I mean, like I know you weren't with the Colts that much, but still your third pro team with the Colts, the Salt Lake City Stallions of the AAF and the Houston Roughnecks of the XFL. How much do you reflect on your journey? I think about it, man. Uh, always, you know, I know I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't get, I don't get comfortable. I'm not complacent. I know I want better for myself. I know I want to. I know I can play in the NFL, and I'm I'm just waiting on my moment to play and, and show them that I'm a hidden gem. Uh, I really just yeah. I do dwell. I mean, I do sit back and think about it, man. And uh, I know it's a bigger picture. You know, I got I got people that look up to me, you know, and 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 tell me that they're proud of me, and um. I'm proud of myself also, and I can be hard on myself at times. I just, you know, I, I just know where where I should be, and while I'm still going there, I'm still motivating the youth. That's my thing. That's my biggest thing. You know, I, I I try to get back to the youth to let them know they can they can do anything they put their mind to. I've been an underdog my whole life, man, and um, yeah, man, it's it's I go by rule to riches and. The road gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be it's gonna be times where you gotta overcome a lot of obstacles and um, things might not go your way. You might gotta slow down, speed up a little bit. But uh, you know, if you keep your mind keep your mind on the destination and, and in the right place and have faith in God and, and the process, you're gonna get there, man. And um, yeah, man, I'm just I'm just a, a living. Living, living proof, living testimony to to a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things I overcame. I am very proud of, man. Um, come, especially coming from Baltimore City. Yeah, and uh, I tell you what, I should have mentioned there at the top whenever I said, you know, all these accolades. You, a college graduate. I mean, that's that's huge. 2017 Concord University 
graduate, and, that, and that's just as important as all these other a- a- athletic uh, accolades you got throughout your career. Um, but JJ, certainly appreciate the time here today, man. I think your story's inspirational. Just just everything that you have experienced uh, throughout your career here at Concord, and obviously into your pro career, man. And we uh, and we certainly look forward to what your next destination is as far as as far as playing professional football most definitely it's, it's definitely going to get much more exciting much more um fun much more fun much more exciting to you know see and uh for everyone to be a part of that you know that that helped me out and and it's time you know um i definitely want to give back to a lot of people man and you know um that takes time and but like with my mindset I know a lot of things going to happen once again you, yeah once again Jeremiah Johnson the guy they called JJ around here for so many years at Concord two time Concord football all American and now professional football player for a few different franchises across um, three different professional football leagues. Man, we thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.